This is our first glimpse at the infamous purple lightning, which will be a recurring theme throughout season three for you know who. But the volcanoes around here have all been inactive for millions of years. Man, how many times is this guy gonna be wrong? Ah, oh, I love this design for Ben. This episode is fantastic with its aesthetics. Ben's pretty jacked in this game too. Anybody, watch me now. I would buy that costume, I don't even care. <laughs> Hey everybody, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. As Ben 10 delves into its third season, it tries to take another swing at doing a seasonal arc, this time with the eventual return of Ziscare, foreshadowed with purple lightning throughout the episodes. But as many people know, at its core, Ben 10 was a show made to sell toys to survive. And with over 30 episodes under its belt now, it's time to step it up a notch. These episodes were made to help introduce new merchandise into the Ben 10 toy line. We have Ben Wolf introduce the Collect Mode feature, which allows Ben to expand his arsenal by scanning aliens in addition to randomly unlocking them. We have Game Over spark fans' interest in Sumo Slammer's merch. And the last episode, well, it's about merchandise, so that counts, right? Look, I gotta do at least three episodes per video now, and it's getting hard to come up with themes. This one's just an outlier. If this is your first breakdown video and you want to know how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all of my previous breakdowns. But by all means, stick around and watch this one first. I'm sure you'll still enjoy the video anyway. Before we jump in, let's go through two quick updates. So, it was brought to my attention that the voice actress for Gwen Tennyson in the Brazilian dub has recently passed away. Ana Lucia voiced Gwen from the classic series all the way up to the reboot, longer than any American voice actor has ever had a turn with the character. E a Gwen do Ben 10, quem dubla? Ben! Ai, Ben, não me estressa, garoto! I was asked to bring attention to this in this week's video because many Brazilian fans were very attached to her voice. And I know a lot of international fans watched this channel, but despite this unfortunate loss, at least we could say we were fortunate enough for her to complete her work in the reboot series finale, putting her time at Ben 10 to a worthy close. Thank you, Ana, for your contribution in helping Ben 10 reach all over the globe. Our second and last update reviews last week's poll, basically asking after whatever the hell happened in the Christmas episode, do you think Santa Claus was real? Or Mr. Jingles was just crazy? Surprisingly, over half of you guys agreed that Santa could be real, with 56% overtaking the other two options. The only reason I was against this is because Santa lore pretty much falls apart once you consider where the parents come into play. Like, do they get presents, or do they know Santa is real in addition and allow him to come into their house? Or what happens to the parents who already by their kids' presents and all of that nonsense. But hey, if Santa's real in Ben 10 and y'all are supportive of this, I'm not gonna take that away from ya. Have a holly jolly Christmas, folks. The first episode that aired in 2007 was on February 17th, Ben Wolf written by James Phillips. This is the first and only episode written by him in the franchise, and it's interesting they'd give such an important episode to a freelance writer, but let's see how he handles the script. When visiting an old friend, Max and the gang are attacked by what appears to be a legendary werewolf. And after biting Ben, he starts to transform into one himself. The wolf also mysteriously stole some satellite equipment, so the Tennysons have to track him down and find out what's going on. I love the skies already. Navajo legend says the web- Oh man, they didn't even try to make this blend. I try not to be too critical about 2000 CG and cartoons, but this- This looks like they downloaded an asset and plopped it in. This doesn't look like it was made for the show. Here she is. That's my granddaughter, Kai. I was hoping to see one of those since when? Only like forever, dweeb. I believe this is the first and one of the rare times we've actually seen young Ben try to impress someone in such a way that isn't himself. Usually he just talks his own skills up and tries to sound like he's the best at whatever he's doing. But here he's just flat out lying. This is our first glimpse at the infamous purple lightning, which will be a recurring theme throughout season three for you know who. And this little haze effect on top of them when it's raining. It's good because it helps add interaction between the rain and the characters, but it also makes them a bit easier to see amongst all of the movement. Take cover in the rust bucket. Although this is what I was talking about, how during the last breakdown, the snow filters from Merry Christmas had depth, whereas here, it looks more like it's flatly placed on top. And even though there's collision with the characters, there's no collision with the ground. But you know, maybe that's just asking for too much. So did the wolf cause the flood? Or the lightning strikes? Cause we find out what the wolf is up to later, but what caused the flood? Or maybe it's just the rain, like this is just what the weather is like there? If so, that's dangerous. It's going rip guys. Silly Ben, Ripjaws isn't allowed to be in season three. Okay. 
Also, is that the first time it hasn't worked just because like it wasn't timed out and we didn't see the lightning strike the omnitrix or anything so it just wasn't working it's nice to see ben being brave even when he's not an alien thank you i really like the shape of his head when it comes into frame and that tilt that's one of those challenging angles to get right and it looks really good here can i have my hand back now that's kind of cute it doesn't look like the bottom parts of these were filled in all the way. I never thought I'd ever see one. Navajo werewolf. I thought they only existed in folklore. That's jumping to a huge conclusion based on something you have no evidence of. It's a sign of pure evil. This is probably one of the rare times we're allowed to see a gun in a show like this. I mean, it shoots darts, sure, but I mean, at least it doesn't look like it has a laser nozzle or something. Me too, Grandpa. You know only braves can be trackers, Kai. Yeah, look how far that thinking has got us. But... Their land... Their rules, Gwen. Uh, I don't know, Max. Gwen's proven herself capable more than enough for him to vouch for her. Like, he sent her into the Null Void, and she's also drop-kicked a gorilla. I get Max wants to be respectful, but I don't know. I think Max should have stood up for Gwen a little more. Maybe I could cheer her up. You so like, like her. Ben's got it. I'm sure she can hear all of this. She's standing, like, right over there. Reminds me of when we went after the Yeti up in the Himalayas. Yeti. So Yetis are real. I like that. Keep expanding the lore. I guess my cousin saved you. He seems okay. Kai's actually pretty nice in this episode. I don't know why Omniverse wrote her to be just as immature and argumentative as Ben can be sometimes. I guess people change as they grow up, but I don't know. Here, I, I like her. At least so far. <laughs> He looks really cool as a silhouette. So when he leaps at them, you hear a sound effect for him smacking them. But when I play it, he doesn't actually make contact with them. He just sort of swipes past them. It's very quick and the sound effect kind of saves it. But I guess when these were animated at two different times, they didn't line them up. Stink fly. Oh, man. That was actually much more convenient. Tag. Classic makes every single alien seem strong and brutal. I love it. Ow. Look at this effect when it starts timing out. You see energy start to spill out of the Omnitrix like a sphere. Guess they're just trying something new. And I love how the eyes glow. I wish Ben's eyes glowed when he was this alien. <laughs> The first collected sample. You know, every time they do the still images shots like this, it's in a slightly different art style. Sometimes there's a lot of cross hatching, sometimes there's a lot of black silhouettes. Here it's got more of a sketchy style. It always looks good though. I like that they switch it up. Aw, oh, don't just shrug it off, Ben. He spent all season two trying to figure out new things to do with the Omnitrix, and now it's finally doing something different, and he's like, Whatever. And with tonight's full moon. There's always a full moon. You know, the usual. Arrest criminals. Scratch yourself like a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> she got up on the table and everything? I mean, Ben doesn't even look this ridiculous. By one. Ben, what's going on? You know, this is the second episode in a row where Ben grew elf ears. <gasps> Uh, I really wish the Halloween aliens got a proper animated transformation sequence with the bubbles and everything. So his toes only grew the nails, but on his hands, his fingers and thumb already grew to the whole, I don't know, claw texture. So he's changing fast. With the silver bullet? That's in the movies. You must dip a silver pendant in the juice of the Arbol del Matrimonio cactus. That's even crazier than the silver bullet. What? I mean, as long as it works great, but he's talking about as if the silver bullet is so ridiculous and then says, no, it's actually the special cactus juice formula you have to make. And place it against its heart. Is anybody else hungry? What is a cow doing out here? I was gonna say this chicken looks pretty rotten, but knowing Grandpa Max, we don't even know if this is chicken. It would be really cool if Ben's eyes glowed right here, like the previous wolves did, especially since he's doing some type of vision power. I guess this is supposed to show how sharp his hunting skills are. I wish we saw more of this ability too. Ben Wolf's a really cool transformation. The NASA tracking station on the North Ridge was just destroyed. Obviously it's angry that technology has invaded what it considers its sacred land. All right, this guy is just assuming everything now. I'm glad he feels confident in his understanding of these subjects, but he doesn't even seem interested in considering other causes or reasons for all of these occurrences and you know you can never truly believe something until you doubt it and it's still true so neat little thing between these two shots the outline and the colors of the fine rocks and what i mean by that are all of the black lines and the darker textures are different in this shot 
but if you look at just the colored textures, they're exactly the same. In fact, I'm pretty sure this shot came first because in this shot, it sort of looks like the rocks were removed and new ones were quickly drawn and thrown in there. It's surrounded by lakes to the north, south, and east. Oh, it's so hard to animate people drawing stuff. I sense its presence. How? It's me! Oh, so Ben's eyes are finally glowing. There we go. That looks neat. Maybe the spirits could help us find that cactus. Ah! The spirits work in strange ways. So even if this wolf is really an alien and not part of their mythical legend, it makes you wonder if stuff like spirits really exist in Ben 10. We got aliens. We got magic. We got Santa Claus, apparently. A yeti. Even time travel and therefore alternate timelines and dimensions. And spirits are technically technically just souls transcending from other dimensions, right? So I think you could build a solid case for basically anything being real in Ben 10 at this point. Why'd they draw Gwen like a bowling pin in this shot? <laughs> Uh, I love how powerful they make this look. His mouth just flicks open and there's immense powerful spheres blasting from his mouth. The camera's not only shaking but turning and there's this beautifully strong radial blur. It pushes the feeling of it like exploding out of his mouth to top level. <laughs> Although the background texture here, with its stripes and painted look, doesn't match to this next shot, which comes immediately after and is pretty much the same angle. So that's a little noticeable. Wait, it's not on my wrist! So that just happened pretty much because you can even see it on his wrist right here when the battle first begins. So maybe every stage of his transformation comes from like an intense wave of emotions. Because the first wave came when he saw Kai, who he has a crush on. The second wave came when he was eating, so he was satisfying his hunger. The third wave came when he temporarily got separated from Max, so perhaps he was scared. And now this wave came because he was battling. In the pop-up edition of this episode, it says that this transformation takes the longest because the Omnitrix is stuck between Axe and collective modes, so Ben's emotions could be what's furthering along the transformation. By the way, when I was also looking at the pop-ups right now, I saw that it says the teleporter feedback from the first Leboan being sent here by Saskare is what interrupted the Omnitrix, but given that that's not explained in the episode, and you don't even get like a music cue or something for it, it's still pretty confusing. <laughs> When I first saw this, it made me think that it didn't work because when they dropped the pendant, the cactus juice fell off. This moment was always super cool though. Maybe you're some alien werewolf. Did that thing ever grab the watch? It's interesting that the flashback is so intricately animated, but when this first happened, it was just that one panning shot. Usually it's the reverse, but they probably did it this way to hide the fact that it was the Omnitrix that changed him and not the bite. And this symbol right here is probably to show us that it's stuck between the two modes because last time it looked like this was also when it was broken in Dr. Animo and the Mutant Ray. Well, if I knew I could just go different aliens if they touch the watch, I'd be an awesome Vilgax. I love how that's the first thing he thinks of. There's always bats everywhere. The volcanoes around here have all been inactive for millions of years. Man, how many times is this guy gonna be wrong? Who wants a ride? Oh, I'm so glad that it works. He didn't even give him a choice. I'll need to take both. Oh, look at this. So when he grabs them, you can see the Omnitrix starts blinking as if it's about to time out, but you don't hear it and Ben doesn't react to it. I'll need to take both of you. You know, I bet if he was used more, he would definitely become a fan favorite. And this little charge that builds up before he blasts is really neat looking. Now it times out. So Ben only gets to do the wolf howl one time in the entire show. The watch absorbed its DNA. Welcome to the club. They're teasing it so bad. Even I Guy was used at least twice. Well, depending. We'll get there. Wow, he didn't even move. Look how big Cannonbolt is compared to everybody else. Remember in his debut episode, he was practically half this size. And now maybe I can collect alien DNA. No, it probably would have gotten old if it was used as much as this would imply in the series. But I still wish it was used at least a little more. And if not that, then at least use the aliens he collected more. You seem like a nice guy, but you're just not my type. Wow, they try to make that so soul-destroying. Look, they even got a focus filter around the sides of her hair. Huh? <gasps> That was before you turned back into, well, you. I figured I could train you, tame you. He's a person, not a pet. You can't talk to my cousin like that. That's so nice of you, Gwen. Thanks for standing up for Ben. Oh, well. 
whatever. Okay, yeah, now I remember why people didn't like Kai in the classic series, too. I can't believe they try to say Ben's supposed to marry her. It's just, they are not a good couple. The thing about a crush is, sometimes you get crushed. And making that future canon sort of negates the whole point of this, showing that not every time that you fall for someone, it's going to work out, and you need to learn to move on, and some people just aren't meant to be together. But not Ben 10K, he's like, screw it. If I want it, I have it. Two secret words is all you need to know. Really? What are they? Hero time. So now we have another new function of the Omnitrix, Collect Mode. This, like Fusions, also changed the course of the fandom and how everybody thought about Ben and his aliens and what might be possible for Ben to turn into. I even have a whole video on the subject for my 300,000 subscriber special, so check that out if you haven't already. But let's get into talking about the episode itself. The plot, I'm going to give it a 3. The best parts of the plot is obviously the stuff having to do with the wolf and the mysterious transformation of Ben, which we later find out, is due to him unlocking a new feature and a new alien. But a surprising amount of the episode doesn't focus on that. Even then with the whole Ben likes Kai plotline, that isn't really focused on much either. A lot of it is setting up all of this lore that doesn't amount to anything, which isn't bad. It's good to have your red herrings. But there's just a lot of times in this episode it feels like nothing's happening. No character moments, no jokes, the plot isn't progressing. People are just standing around doing stuff. And with an episode like this, I feel like it could have been much more exciting not to have this bleed into the entertainment category but I can't help but feel they just dropped the ball with this one. Although the bait and switch by showing Ben unlocking a new alien under the guise of something else happening, that twist is great, but it only works once. And given the fact there aren't hints or foreshadowing about it sprinkled throughout the episode to lead up to this reveal, it doesn't offer any hindsight rewatchability either. You're just dropped this fact on you towards the end of the episode and just find out you're wrong. Characterization will get a four. I really liked Max's partner. It's always cool to meet people from his past. He's had a very interesting history history both with and without the plumbers. Although Kai was a character who seemed to just be whatever she needed to be in the moment, and honestly it baffles me that Omniverse would want to go out of their way to try to hook Ben up with Kai. I'm trying not to let that affect my opinion on this episode too much, but even in the episode itself, there's just no redeeming qualities on why Ben would even like Kai in the first place. Yeah, he's 10, that's how 10 year old crushes work, but they dedicated so much screen time to it, and it just feels like a whole lot of nothing. Like we get this really cool plotline about a new mystical wolf, and something happening in a Ben we've never seen before, and even then the characters aren't taking it that seriously. Ben doesn't seem as interested, there's also that scene where Max didn't really stand up for Gwen, Max didn't bust out any of that plumber gear, it just seemed like when you describe this episode, it sounds so much more important and exciting than what's actually happening. Visuals will also get a 4. The transformation of Ben throughout the episode is nice, and a lot of the animation in here looks great, but like my previous points, a lot of the animation is dedicated to them just doing nothing, talking about inconsequential matters. And the setting of the desert at night gets old pretty quickly when it's done throughout the whole episode, but wait till we get to Alien Force. Importance, it will get a solid 5. This is the first episode that sets up the scare plot line and also introduces the collection feature which becomes a reoccurring thing throughout the entire franchise so it's definitely not a skippable one and entertaining i'll give it a three without repeating my earlier points too much it's just not as exciting as it should be doesn't have a lot of rewatchability but it is cool to learn more about the omnitrix and the wolf is an awesome alien with that we're gonna leave this at a 19 out of 25 one of the higher ones of the season so far written by marty eisenberg game over first premiered february 24th 2000 2007. A strike of purple lightning causes Ben and Gwen to get sucked inside Ben's favorite Sumo Slammers video game. And while they're there, Kenko, the villain of the game, wants to use this opportunity to break into the real world. Hey, look at that, purple lightning. This isn't part of the Zascare arc episodes, but it does take place during that season. So it's really cool to see hints towards that arc, even in episodes that don't have to do with it. Let me play. I already have a partner, Ishiyama. Who chooses the NPC over a real person? Every game I've played with an NPC as a partner just has them running into the wall and wasting all their items. Mochi, you're getting caught in the microphone cord. There we go. What the beep beep beep. Why would I want to play with you? Prove you're not afraid of getting your sumo butt kicked by a girl. <laughs> Oh no, you challenged his masculinity. High score for the Gwen Warrior. Good. If you look closely, their video game characters resemble the outfits they're going to get in the game when they're downloaded into it, but they don't look like themselves. Like this isn't Ben and Gwen, but it is their outfits. That's a nice little detail. I wonder what their model sheets look like. You only have two lives left. <sighs> Sore loser, Ben. This is a nice and smooth transition into the machine. I think that's the Pac-Man sound effect. Oh, 
Yep, it's that purple lightning. In fact, if it wasn't for that, there is no way I would buy this can even happen. I wouldn't say upgrade downloading Ben and Gwen into the game is one of his abilities, and it's something that he can do again. We'll talk more about this later in the breakdown. I like all these passes. You get a silhouette pass, then a detailed pass, then a transparency pass. Very video gamey. Big lightning flash must have zapped upgrade and we wound up in the video game. Always with the deduction skills. Good job. Cool. I'm gonna try to not talk about this kind of logic too much, but I mean, how is upgrade even able to upgrade this? This is all just code. I suppose upgrade can do whatever he wants since he can manipulate that code, but he's treating it as if this is a machine with some type of logic to its upgrading abilities. But hey, look at these flags. These flags are cool. <laughs> The way he upgrades this one is also different from the one we just saw. That's also pretty neat. This weapon is really cool. I like how this spawns out. Pachoo. Sumo slammed. Oh, I love this design for Ben. This episode is fantastic with its aesthetics. Ben's pretty jacked in this game too. We're each down to our last life. Wow, right off the bat. Usually in episodes involving characters going to video games, this doesn't happen until the very end. See, is the dust getting kicked up by him colliding with the ground programmed into the game? It seems more than them just getting transported into the game happened. It's like it turned this reality into something with concrete physics. I love the video game theme. the instructions. I'm not gonna lie, it really bothers me when I play video games with people and they choose to not read the instructions. Like, I'm one of those people that I read the instructions through and through. Because a lot of games don't even teach you how to play anymore. This has got to be a dream come true for him, though. Next level. Imagine when VR gets this good. Do you think Gwen would be allowed to take one of these? Or would she get an error that says like this item is not equipable for this character? It'd be really cool to see another character, even Ishiyama, if he can obtain this coin and turn into a big old Ishiyama Tetramand. This effect is sort of new, where it's swarming in from a white silhouette and growing into him. Usually it's in reverse for when he's timing out. Also, one of Four Arms' best looks. And it's the main man himself. How do you know my name? I'm your biggest fan. I know all your stats. You weigh 527 pounds. This is like me if I ever met Ben. Sumo? Slap! Look at that lightning that shot out of his foot. I'm a good guy. Forgive me if I don't believe you. All these floating objects in the background are a really nice atmosphere. Look at this machine. The world of Sumo Slammers is like ancient oriental, but also sort of steampunk. Or cyberpunk, I guess. <laughs> The clap. It's true. I own every Sumo Slammer's comic book. Doubles of every trading card. I even eat your cruddy cereal. Yeah, this is me. Who is this magnificent warrior? That's just my goofy cousin. Yeah, even Ishiyama recognizes. Back off. I'm Gwen. I am Ishiyama. I'll show you a real champion. <laughs> He should have grabbed one and thrown it into the others. So Ishiyama's got a super form that's basically just him, but even larger. It's a neat addition, but they're not too dissimilar from each other. Man, imagine if they always had this hair. Upgrade could be hidden anywhere. Not anywhere. So makes me wonder what other Omnitrix icons you could find hidden in this game. Ishiyama's looks good, but Ben and Gwen's walking cycles look a bit floaty. Like the angle of the ground doesn't line up too. Sort of looks like they're moonwalking or sliding across the ground. His head stays the same size. That's what it is. Whenever you're you're drawing characters the smaller the head you give it the larger they look game this is no game i'm also so surprised at how much of a conversation they can have with ishiyama because these are all responses that the developers didn't program into the game so i really think that purple lightning brought some type of sentience to this realm because so many things are happening in here that would literally be impossible unless the developers programmed the code of the game to make these characters be able to be this comprehensive and the atmosphere be this interactive. Ishiyama doesn't know he's a program in a game. Well, to be fair, neither do we. We're all programs in this simulation. Ooh. Never steal someone's loot if they open the trunk. Who needs it? I just hit the Omnitrix jackpot. Oh, it's like that level in, um... Oh, God, what was it? I did that video with Diamond Bolt. Ben 10 Battle Ready. There's a secret room where you can find, like, a whole bunch of rewards. I even think it says the word Ben in one of them, made out of collectibles. One may be a trap! 
so Ben's made everybody, including himself, lose a life now. This thing behind him looks like a picture that was plopped in there. It's like a stretched out cityscape. Or maybe it just looks that way to me. I can't tell. But these lanterns right here are pretty pixely. Yeah, right here in this shot, this is definitely something stretched over the top. I'm pretty sure it's a cityscape. <laughs> This is kind of cool, how he forms from a pixelated silhouette, because, you know, video games. Tell me about this upgrade icon, boy. Yeah, these programs are way too sentient. The real world. Yet another domain I will rule with an iron fist. Can he even survive outside in the real world? Turning someone into a program is one thing, but turning a program into something real with organic compounds and a natural consciousness. I mean, who really knows? Kenko is a pretty cool villain, so they were just like, yeah, Kenko can go into the real world, and we saw it. I'd probably buy it, just because Kenko's pretty awesome. But that's always been a subtle pet peeve of mine with shows that have the transporting into the video game kind of logic. There's always going to be a huge hand wave of logic and you just gotta accept it for the ride. <laughs> So when he grabbed the forearms icon, he didn't immediately transform, but he did with Cannonbolt. Cannonbolt looks amazing too. It's unfortunate him and forearms are the only ones we get that have sumo forms. Which alien would you guys want to see have a sumo outfit if we could see at least one more transformation? Let me know down below. When I think about it, I would say, well, who would it work with? Like Heat Blast sounds like he wouldn't work, for example. But at the same time, if Cannonbolt didn't get one, I probably would have said it, Cannonbolt wouldn't have worked. So I guess it could be anybody. For me, I can probably see Accelerate being some type of ninja or maybe a rip jaws fishing warrior stingfly would be hard to think of but yeah let me know which sumo alien you guys would have liked to see if they added one more into the show oh these guys are awesome also if you look here when the screen goes to a very horizontal frame the white glow exceeds outside of the frame like they're exploding out of their own reality ben? i really appreciate the dripping animation on the window for the rain grandpa must be messing with the controls no don't shut us off no don't, don't shut us off so the first time they said that before they cut the commercial, Gwen's voice wasn't there. There could be a handful of reasons why that is the way it is. Please tell me I'm on one of those hidden camera shows. Why would this game need a headset? Some of the backgrounds in this episode look amazing, mostly the game stuff, but a fair amount has a very sharp pixely texture. Like these images were processed through something first. The rain and lightning help hide it, but when you pause it and really take a look at it, that's when it starts to show. Sumo Slammer Smackdown. Yeah, Grandpa. You really think the greatest plumber in the universe is gonna back down. Also, this right here is pretty sick. Chaboom! Ben, come on! Going round boy. Round boy. This image of the statue right here seems like it was one of the ones from earlier, but perspective warped to slant up. You can sort of see it with the circular parts of the necklace. They make sort of a flat oval shape. I've also done that a lot myself in my own art to try to save time doing backgrounds, so I can pretty much recognize what it looks like. You can see it all over 5YL2. I mean, everyone's guilty of it. <laughs> what do you think you look like when you transform, Ben? The dojo. Oh, it didn't wait for them. I was pausing this to try to point out that her weapon spawns when she shrinks back down, but they actually animated her reaching behind herself and grabbing the bow first. That's great attention to detail. And this under part of the dojo with all of the wooden planks. This is a great arena. I wonder if that really hurts since they're in the game world. Find that upgrade icon! I wanna prove to Ishiyama that I'm a hero too! You will! You have to start thinking like a hero again instead of trying to impress a computer program! Smart move, Ben. Oh, and this is so awesome too. This is just a great, fun episode. <laughs> I know that struggle. You're in the boss level and you're trying to find a health packet and you're just smashing everything you can. Something great, Ishiyama. Yes! Do it now! Your power is mine! So, other characters can use the icons? In that case, yeah, Ishiyama Tetraman. I'm gonna need to see that someday. <laughs> This is so nicely animated. I always appreciate when light sources change, but so do the shadows to match it. Look at this one frame. This one frame is just art. Ishiyama, no. His walking sound effects are sort of similar to Vilgax's. Your sumo slammer hero. I can take care of myself. Ooh, this is cool. Hold on, my little window is blocking it. Look at these weapons. We get a hammer and a mace. We seldom see Upgrade just shapeshift his body without being part of technology first. But your travel plans just got you. Yes. Aw, oh, Sumo Max. Let's get out of here before he succeeds. Let's skedaddle. I'm going to defeat him honorably. You don't need to, though. He's a video game. Just get out of there. 
Oh, it would have been cool to see an upgraded Kenko form. So this makes me wonder, at least in the game logic, if it's the suit that makes him the shapeshifter. Because he doesn't seem to try to shapeshift outside of the suit. And the suit always did transform with him. Gotta get me some of that Sumo Slammers lore. Look, how about you kids go out and get some fresh air? <laughs> I thought they'd never leave. <laughs> So that was the video game episode. Now this is a very fun episode of the series and it had a lot of resonance with the fans. There was even a few online games based on it, I'm pretty sure. And of course, all the Sumo Slammers toys that came out around the time the classic series was airing. So they were able to merchandise the merchandise inside of the show. So you got Ben 10 merch and then fictional Ben 10 merch, which was cool. I mean, I had a few of them myself. In fact, I even gave Ben a Sumo Slammers tee in 5YL and you can buy that tee in our shop right now. So a little plug right there. But anyways, as much as I like this episode, the plot is going to get a three. I've been handing out threes a lot now, and honestly, just because of a lot of the logic and whatnot of it, I would have scored it lower. But this is one of those scenarios where it's a cliche episode, but the Ben 10 flavor really shines, and it flourishes in this episode. Like, it's everywhere. And you know, it's hard to really write a good character gets trapped in a video game episode, so I can't really fault the episode for it just based on logic. You have to have a ton of liberties with something like this. And as far as the plot go, for a one-off episode I think they did pretty much the best that they can it's just you know it's still very simple and doesn't make a lot of sense the characterization though it will get a five in a way this is someone that Ben really looks up to and we haven't really seen someone like that in the show before the galactic enforcers he thought were cool and had a lot of respect for but he didn't really know them and grandpa Max while it is his grandpa since he's family Ben has like that attitude barrier you know I mean as Ben 10 fans it'd pretty much be like if we met Ben 10 a fictional character that we've liked for a long time and know quite a bit about and of course when you see them you can't help but want to feel like you're worthy of being in their presence and it does make Ben very cocky but in this way it's sort of understandable you want to see him finally earn the respect of someone he really cares about and it sort of takes Gwen to pull him out of that and realize it's all just a game plus Max getting involved you could have easily left Max out of this episode and here it would have been very understandable but the fact that Max also played a role in this episode that was really nice and as simple as Ishiyama and Kenko were I'd still say they were pretty good characters. They didn't really need as much well-roundedness as some of the other supporting characters I've taken off points for. And I guess them being video game characters does play into that. But they serve their purpose very well and they're still very interesting. Visuals, of course, I'm giving it a five. The animation is fantastic and I really dig the aesthetic of the sumo world. Again, I just wish we could have seen at least one more alien in the sumo style. But it's not like I'm gonna take off points for that. It's just, it was so good it left me wanting more. Even just Ben and Gwen, they looked fantastic fantastic. Importance, that's where it takes a hit. This episode can easily get a zero in importance. It's very skippable, but I'm giving it at least one point because, you know, I always take the Ben 10 experience into account. This episode is extremely memorable among fans, and it's so fun, you're just not gonna want to skip it if you can spare the time. But aside from just being very cool, it serves nothing towards the overall plot of this season, and this season does have an overarching story. But entertaining, if you haven't guessed, it will get a five. This is an episode I feel like has a lot of rewatchability. It's just a very fun ride. It's cool to see all of the video game moves. And it makes you speculate about what a real Sumo Slammers video game or even a Sumo Slammers universe would be. So despite not being important at all, I would still add it to your binge list if you're trying to get through the series and know why people like the show. That also leaves this episode at a 19 out of 25. Season 3 started a little weak, but we've got two 19s. Let's see if this last episode can break into the 20s. Perhaps with the longest title in the classic series, Super Alien Hero Buddy Adventures first premiered also on February 24th, also written by Marty Eisenberg, just like Game Over. Ben and Gwen go to Planetary Studios in Hollywood to confront Tim Dean, an artist who appears to be ripping off of Ben's alien heroics in his new cartoon. While they are there, conflict stirs with Kangaroo Commando, one of Ben's old childhood heroes, as a conspiracy arises between the two creators. These look like Butch Hartman characters. He'll not be tossing me out of the game. Foreshadowing aliens with accents. Coming up my feet. Time to get unstuck. Is that Phil Lamar? Oh my god, no, that's Paul Eiding. Paul Eiding is fiery buddy. Time to get on Time to get on okay, I kinda hear it. Then who's handy buddy? Steve Bloom. Okay. Even for a cheap looking cartoon, the smoke animation's pretty good. Yeah, that's definitely still D. I like how this is done in the style of the animations in the theme song. Are those super lame over? versions of your alien heroes. When the reboot first came out, people kept slapping clips of the reboot on the screen of Gwen dissing the characters. So glad we're past that though. You know, it's a very small effect, but this rotating globe right here 
is perfectly blended CG. The only reason I can even tell it's CG is because of how smooth it is, but this is like one-to-one -one the same style as the animation. You can even see the rust bucket stuck here in the background with the smoke cloud forming don't get what the big deal is he made me want to be a superhero i wouldn't doubt it but i wish we heard a little bit more about kangaroo commando before this episode because sumo slammers being ben's favorite thing is kind of like a staple of his character but to say that kangaroo commando which is something we're just finding out about right now midway through season three is what made him want to be a hero comes off as kind of bullshit Anybody, watch me now. i would buy that costume i don't even care <laughs> Tim Dean, wanna get an autograph? I'm really digging all these costumes. I know they're lame, but it's just cool to see something like this in the show. Hey. Wow. Check out this weird piece hanging off of the Omnitrix dial. That's an off-model error we haven't seen before. And the strap coming around too. I know this is literally just a second, but it caught my eye. I've never seen the Omnitrix drawn like this before. You totally stole those alien heroes in the news. Prove it. Just like Hollywood. Look at this heat blast shirt. I want this. Then maybe it's time for a little destructive criticism. Yeah, let's go kick his ass. <laughs> I like how in this shot we get a direct comparison between Heat Blast and this art style and the fictional TV show art style. At least the coloring is spot on. Did he drop that fireball? Look, he makes it, but when he gets distracted by Gwen, it doesn't dissipate or anything. He just drops it. It's Kangaroo Commando. This has been one of my favorite things Heat Blast has ever done. Well, not this right here. I mean, this is cool. I love the fire tornadoes, but right here, when he sucks all the fire out, it's so quick, but it's one of the most unique things Heat Blast has ever done. And I love the steam trail that results after his use of his power. Ruin my stunt show? I can fix this. It bounced? Yeah, his fireballs are being treated like objects in this episode. How do you even get fire to bounce like that? <laughs> Wow. Stunt equipment or not, to build boots that are strong enough to send heat blast flying across the pool? That's powerful. Gotta get me some of those. And the strength of that cord to pull heat blast? Not to mention the strength of his arm to hold on to that gun. Public what they want. Wow, he's really gonna fight a fire guy? Either Kangaroo Commando really thinks that Heat Blast is just a guy in a costume despite literally manipulating fire, or Ben's crazy enough to fight Kangaroo Commando as if he was a real superhero. I hope they both know what's happening here. This is something I noticed as a kid. When he shoves the paper forward, the mouth on the Wild Mud picture goes from white to black. <laughs> Yeah, this would be so crazy to see in real life. Can you imagine that? All in a day's work. Are you okay? I'm gonna be Kangaroo Commando's partner. This coming right after game over, where Ben's trying to earn the respect of someone he admires. Kind of strange seeing that plot line back to back. And funny enough, these episodes aired on the same day too. Kangaroo Commando isn't so much. Abel North. So if you guys didn't know, it's obviously a parody of Adam West. Abel North. Adam West, and he's basically just Batman, but a kangaroo. Adam West did do a lot of parody voice acting at the time. I bet they probably even could have gotten Adam West if they wanted to. But you know, if Fairly Odd Parents did it and Family Guy did it, it probably would have gotten old. I even build my own gadgets and special effects. That's super impressive because it's not just like he's building his own special effects arsenal for his show. His gadgets work. I believe we're missing the Stars with Scars horror movie makeup demonstration for this. Is that something Gwen would care about? I feel like that's a stretch just to make a Gwen likes makeup joke or something. That was pretty low. Stealing fiery buddy to try and- <laughs> He's rolling up here with the costume, guys. Listen, dude, your costumes don't work as well as his gadgets. Super alien hero buddies will bury you. You know, these are real conversations that happen in Hollywood. You want to talk about lame old villains? Bowling ball bandit? Kitty litterer? That's awesome. I love short lines. Yeah, give me a giant forearms balloon, too. These special effects rock! They really do. Those look like real lasers. Yeah, see, this is all real. He's really doing this. Planned or not, these kids almost died. And this backflip, too. Look at this. I think I know where the charm of Bazell went. A little help from a friend. Look at the way he rotates the dial, too. He's like ticking it every time instead of doing a full rotation. With a little help from a friend. I got four! In many frames, the smoke layer doesn't line up with the holes cut for the debris. You can see it happen throughout this animation. <laughs> that, that felt good. 
accident and rescue seem convenient? Yes. Someone rigged this right. Someone who wore this ink-stained glove. Just happens to find a glove. Yeah, only Gwen's able to put together entire plots out of obscure evidence. This glove is always facing you, no matter where the camera is pointed. It's a right-handed glove. Dean did all his sketches left-handed. <gasps> but he's not Kangaroo Commando. He's an actor who do anything to save his show. He's also kind of a genius inventor, but this water animation is top-notch. Something like this is very tricky to get right. It even becomes more transparent as it soaks into the wooden planks. I actually gonna dig this look for Gwen. Ben, however, needs his hair spikes. <laughs> All of this is some pretty phenomenal animation too. Like they're stumbling and running. They're trying to get up and go. Ben's tripping over himself. And Gwen's looking back as she runs. Like these aren't just average walk cycles. There's a lot of movement happening within the running. And Gwen's leg gets cut off. Guess everything can't look too good. Ooh, wow, and that lasts for a bit. It has to stop before someone gets hurt. Who's he talking to? Himself? <laughs> How original! Hanging over a flaming vat of deadly chemicals. Time to accelerate! Wild Vines is the only transformation that you actually see his icon for during the transformation sequence. All the others, the Omnitrix is in the default symbol and it gets absorbed into his wrist. I never get tired of his though. His is probably the most intricate. It's unfortunate it's the last one we get. Oh man! Commando? Probably feels awesome being able to contort your body like this. We're very weird. How can North be in two places at once? Well, the screen footage could be pre-recorded. Don't hurt me. I just do drawing. I'm not even that good. Same. So he really expected to murder both of them on a live broadcast at a theme park. His twin brother? Kane. So Kane and Abel, if you guys haven't caught that. I built all the gadgets while you took all the credit. Yeah, I can see why he's mad. I don't get why his brother had to take all the credit. One could be the inventor, one could be the hero. I'm sure that really wouldn't change their public presence at all. But I mean, he doesn't have to commit murder in front of children. Whoa, Gwen's face is all kinds of funky right here. And Mr. North here is just zoning out. Kidnap Dean. Because he ripped off my idea. Come up with anything original in Hollywood. And that joke holds up even more today. But now the world will know at last who the real creator of super alien hero buddy adventures really is. <laughs> How can you say that so seriously? You know, in episode time, I'm surprised Ben is still wild mine. You'd think he would have timed out by now. Oh my god, put him down. There really is a whole episode of Super Alien Hero Buddy Adventures going on back here, isn't there? What's happening? We got the two kitty litterers with a red orb, but it turns out the red orb is heat blast. Were they squishing him? Are you okay? Yeah. That's excellent choreography. Looks like I'm not the only one who isn't quite what he appears to be. Actually, he's the only one who's exactly who he appears to be. Oh my goodness, they're gonna fall off. But didn't all of them just see Ben time out? Hey, what about me? Sorry, kid. What do you mean? You literally saw him transform into an alien. Oh, Max's face is doing that thing again. Thought Ben might like them. They reminded me of his aliens. That's so sweet, Max. Come on, Ben, you can't even be mad at that. Ugh. Grandpa! <sighs> well, of course he could. He's Ben. Well, what's up with the weird colorations of the heroes right here? In fact, in this earlier shot, they're the regular colors. In fact, I'm pretty confident this is literally the same drawing, just colored twice. All the colors are exactly the same between these shots, except for Doggy and Handy Buddy. And who do you think this is a poster for? Is this a miscolored Fiery Buddy? All right, who cares? Let's let's wrap this up. Also, real quick, on the wiki, it says in the crowd there's supposed to be a girl dressed as Sakura Haruno, but without pink hair. I think they're talking about this character Character, but honestly, I'm not confident this is a Sakura reference. I think this is just a Heat Blast t-shirt. You can see the same girl right here and in the back of the shirt. Yeah, this is probably a Heat Blast t-shirt. So this one's up there with some of the stranger episodes of the classic series. The plot, I'm going to give it a two. Not just because of how seemingly ridiculous Kane's whole plan and motivations were, but the whole focus of the episode seems to keep on shifting, and I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to get out of any of this. It seems like it's gonna start off about a commentary of how creators adapt things into new mediums and change a bunch of stuff, which as you know nowadays is an incredibly commonplace practice. And it seems like the whole point of the episode is getting to the bottom of 
who's ripping off Ben's aliens. But then it seems to be about Hollywood unoriginality. But then the competitive rivalry between Abel and Tim. And then ends with that twist about his evil brother. It just seems like it's very unfocused. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of story they were trying to tell here. It was fun, I'll give it that. But I'd still say it's a good episode. Like, plot is only one of these five categories. It's just when you isolate the plot, the ridiculousness shines. But characterization, it can go up to a four. It's only faulted because more time is spent on characters trying to figure things out than how they actually really feel about the subjects at hand. And this episode makes you think it's supposed to be about the characters, but it's really more about the mystery. Also, you know, Kane is batshit crazy over a cartoon, which I guess if you follow his perspective, creating inventions and then having someone else take the glory, then trying to create something new, the TV show, and then having someone else steal that, sure, it could drive you insane. But to just start murdering people on broadcasted screens, that's quite the leap. Like, there must have been a lot more going on for him to decide that. Also, immediately coming out of Game Over, where we've seen how much Ben idolizes Ishiyama, which seems concrete because pretty much since the first couple of episodes, Ben has been a hardcore Sumo Slammers fan. To randomly pull this kangaroo commando character out of nowhere and say he's the reason Ben became a hero, that's a weird retroactive character trait that only serves purpose for this episode. And episode-only character traits are something that I never really feel is worth it in the end. Like in that one episode of Alien Force, Good Copy, Bad Copy, Copy, where Kevin says that Ben's eye twitches whenever he lies. They say that as if that's such a common character trait, that it's always been that way, but it literally only matters for this one episode, so it's like inconsistent characterization. But other than that, it was pretty fine, so you know, a 4 is fair. Visuals, I feel, is well deserving of a 5. Planetary Studios is an interesting place and very different from a lot of the things we've seen in Ben 10. We see many different interpretations of Ben's aliens, from having them in a different art style, to seeing the costume theme park workers, and then actually seeing Ben's aliens in action alongside them. Not to mention Kangaroo Commando, he's pretty badass. And the animation was very solid. So I'm pretty happy with the visuals in this one. Importance, it's another one that should get a zero, but I'll give it a one for the factor of how much it impacted the fandom. This is one of those episodes I feel like everyone just talks about every now and then. Somehow it just always comes up. I don't know why, but this is just one of those episodes that's still relevant. Not even for the reasons you'd think, like the jokes or the commentary on what Hollywood produces, but but just the fact that they made this episode, it's like, yeah, it'd be good to give it a watch. But again, it doesn't matter to the overall season three story or even the franchise itself. And entertaining, it will get a four. The plotline disconnectivity, whether you notice it or not, it does make the episode viewing experience kind of foggy. Like it's entertaining, but it doesn't really seem like you're watching it for something to happen. You're just kind of taking in the humor and the action and there's just a plot there to help weave all of that together. But it's still a fun episode. So that wraps this one up at a 16 out of 25. Let's go ahead and check out that roadmap. So, starting with Ben Wolf, the episode clearly states that it takes place in New Mexico, but the pop-up trivia places it in Arizona. Thanks to some of Matt's research, he's found that the Navajo Nation happens to be located between the two state borders. So this episode likely began on the New Mexico side, and ended on the Arizona side, near the Canyon de Chile, as mentioned by Kai. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But thanks, Matt. Go check him out for all the road- Ooh. I'm so sorry. Go check him out for all the roadmap help if you haven't already. The second episode, Game Over, doesn't have a specified location, but it was probably on the road to Hollywood, California, where Super Buddies takes place. We're now halfway through our season three map, but don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the conclusion. I gotta say, these episodes did do a good job trying to influence you to buy more merch. Allowing Ben to have the ability to scan new alien forms gives us so much to look forward to every time we see a new alien on screen, because we can speculate what Ben's version of it might be like, not to mention all of the toys that can come from this. Now, unfortunately, in the classic series, it's not a feature that's used outside of this arc, but it does become a significant point in the whole franchise going forward, and it's this episode that introduces it for us. As for Game Over and Super Buddies, there was a lot of similarities between each other. An episode with Ben trying to win the respect of his childhood hero, written by Marty Eisenberg, even premiering on the same day. I mean, you can't make this up. Now, I'll admit, these facts are cherry-picked, and in fact, when watching the these episodes, it's not even that obvious. But they are similarities that I wanted to point out. As for the episodes on their own, considering the merchandise, Sumo Slammer versions of Ben's aliens was a great choice. But I wish the figures actually had the Sumo versions of themselves like they did in the episode, because the figures are just rounded characters with multicolored Mawashi. Anyways, to wrap it up, these episodes were pretty good, a lot better than how season three started, but they are still inconsequential. But before I go, I want to set up this week's poll. Since this breakdown video is merchandise themed, 
I guess it makes sense to ask you guys what your favorite kind of merchandise was. If you even bought merchandise for the show, that is. First, we got the collectible figures. You know, the basic ones that everyone's familiar with. Usually they come with an info card or a miniature. Then we have the more interactive figures like the Heat Blast flashlight, the Wild Mutt motion detector, that Humongosaur toy that shot missiles out of its mouth for whatever reason. Then we had the wearable stuff like the Omnitrix devices and the masks and the arms and all of those. The DVDs and box sets before streaming services were a thing. And of course, the video games. The online games don't count. That's about it for this video. You can stay up to date with everything that I do on my social media and join the Discord for more community interaction. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month for exclusive weekly updates on all of our projects like five years later and, and beyond. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and until next time, keep it busy.